what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this, my second channel, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with all the Flat Earth Debate pre-show and after-show goodness. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal and crypto link in the info box below the video. Could be frogging my throat. We are joined by Anthony Riley, so I'll say a quick hello to him. How are you doing, Anthony? Yo, yo. Good stuff. Now, we were just chatting away about the debunking that's going to ensue on the live show. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Conspiracy Cats, who is getting attention on this rather convoluted and obscure claim that he's debunked Flat Earth with this shot of Mount St. Helens, um, is is garbage and obscure and <laughs> and not in the slightest bit concise for somebody who was looking to actually prove to themselves they're on a sphere. But ultimately it suffers from the exact issue we are currently dealing with, the hijacking of perspective. And in many ways it's actually a useful tool, especially with conspiracy caps currently on the on the ropes as he is, um, to basically smash the living daylights out of it on account of the fact that it does exclude perspective. It's the usual trick. So yeah. um, this is good news. We can use it like we can any other tool. Would have been nice if it was a nice clear cut, not obscure, not riddled with um, literally deliberate mistakes. But there we go. That's that's what we're presented with. And no worries. I, I don't have an issue. I don't know about you, Anthony, but every photo is a flat earth proof and always will be. So we can pick this one to pieces and show where it's nonsense. And it's just the same as anything else. And the curve calculator which is what they utilise to give them their values, excludes perspective. Conspiracy Cats is literally saying the mountain behind is much bigger, so should appear bigger in this picture. Well, no, we have perspective, and that's excluded from your calculator, which is why you would make such a nonsense assertion that just because it's bigger means it should appear bigger. No, things get smaller into the distance. That's perspective, the thing we're banging on constantly about you ignoring on the globe side of the argument. And as conceded by Wiggles and Rumpus and the intellectual ones that know damn well they're excluding perspective, they just try and justify why. But when you actually put that into the phraseology of how a flat earth should appear, in quotes, then you end up with the very real problem that we're highlighting. Things that you describe, i.e. a bigger mountain in the background, should be bigger when it's in the background. It will appear smaller. It's gone further into the distance, you absolute buffoon. So rather than these dicks, like conspiracy flaps, joining the show, which is offered on a daily basis, or addressing any of the debunking of the, what would you call it, the sideshow affair with this, uh, uh, what's it called again? Edge lip peak, whatever the hell they call it. It's just a sideshow. Just yeah, a I mean, th this is where I'm at. Um... I think this um, side peak thing is a load of sh it's 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 nonsense because why would you go with the side peak when you can go with the full height of the mountain and see whether the original assertion is correct in the first place whether or not um, the Mount Rainier should be bigger or smaller and of course when you do the angular size maths on it it says that it shouldn't be bigger so the original assertion by um, conspiracy cats as a misrepresentation of the flat earth model anyway and on that basis you don't even need to touch this side peak stuff this side peak stuff is very much moot it's yeah it's debatable it doesn't i mean trying to work out what the facts are doesn't mean that you're making assertions about it we're just trying to find them out but <clears throat> on the basis that we can try and challenge this stuff um it's really difficult to as ascertain the height of this side peak anyway um but what we can tell is that we can look on wikipedia and it gives us the elevation from sea level, but it gives us also the prominence, which is local to the, the height of the land the base sits on. And the prominence value is <clears throat> 4,600 feet. Now that 4,600 feet we can see has been reduced in height somewhat by this uh, eruption in 1982. Um, and you can judge roughly where the, um, as, a, as a percentage, you can judge roughly where the, the side peak sits and it's around about 70% of the, the total height of the prominence so if you got 70% of that 4,600 feet, well, 10% is there, 460, so 6, 4, 8, 12, 16, you're talking about 1,600 um, feet there or thereabout. Um, but that's that's significantly different to the height, the claim of the height originally. 
But anyway, it's moot because it's not our claim. And all all we need to do is find out where they got that number from to see whether or not others, other numbers support it. Um, and basically, it's really difficult to verify. Um, so I don't know where they've got the citation from, but we need to know that so we can basically see whether or not it supports other things. And I, I can tell from my own research so far that it's not easy to work this stuff out because um, different citations use different measuring methods to be able to measure the effect of it. Um, some of them do it from sea level, some of them don't, some of them do it in meters feet, um, some meters or feet. Um, and it's really difficult to know what the actual side peak elevation is. Um, and that's that's really what, what we need to try and do. And it's not our claim to prove. It's their claim. We're trying to verify it. We think there's an issue. They've got to prove that the claim that they made is factually true. And I don't think it is. But it's moot in any event because the bigger picture is that it's all based on a misrepresentation of a flat earth. And that's that kind of puts that one into the bin. Well, exactly. Um, that, that you, you, you've been banging this drum to me for ages. And, you know, I'm going to now parrot it back to you. That it, it, Exactly. It's a moot point. Um, and originally you wanted to just move past it. And I was like, no, it's got to be addressed. And Captain Capslock has addressed it. You know, they are not telling us this information. We'd be demanded of it. It'd be literally ignored out of hand if it didn't have that information to begin with. However, they're analysing this stuff without any information being offered in regards to the specific key details. So in that regard, you've asked him, he's ignored it in the same way he ignores me when I ask him for how we have gas pressure without the container. So at that point, we've debunked it. You know, we can only draw our own conclusions if they're not going to tell us. It's like, is it a secret how you've got this, <laughs> how you've got this height that you use to make your point? But I get, get to the actual point. You originally wanted to address the bigger picture, which is to say that they exclude perspective. When he says... That the uh, that Rainier is bigger, so should appear bigger. Well, no, it's further away. This is literally the level of Dougal on Father Ted. This is a toy cow right next to you. It's not bigger than the cow out there, which is real. It's just closer to you. So the small yeah. cow can look bigger than the real cow because it's near to you. But in his assertions, he's basically saying. The big amount it needs to look bigger. Uh, well, no, you've just literally had too many doses of your own bullshit from the curve calculator. So while it misrepresents a flat plane to have literal, literally no changes into the distance, everything appearing along this one straight line that they draw in an orthographic side view, you know, no, that's not how the world is, flaps, and we're going to batter you over the head with it. You think yeah. that the bigger mountain should appear bigger? Oh, what? Should that be the case if it was 200, 300, 400 miles away? Should it still be bigger? <laughs> of course not. It's going to get smaller. Not in a side view with one line drawn between it, though, which is how you think the flat world works. No, it does actually get smaller into the distance, and you guys think it's falling into Earth curve while you simultaneously literally assert that on a flat plane it would remain the same size as it gets further away. No, no. Hopefully the penny will drop for all those who haven't quite got it yet, Anthony. But I don't know if it will. It's taking a while, but people still get in touch and say, Ah, you mean to say that he's saying 250 metres up this mountain should be at the same level of the, as the 250-foot mountain? Well, it's further away. Yeah. In other words, they ignore perspective, right? Yeah. It's bad. What's really surprising is that... what What's going to happen? What's, what's surprising is this is a physics teacher doesn't realize that he's, he has a problem um has to has to obfuscate it um to make it really compelling and refuses to accept that there might be a mistake here on his part and i don't know what else to say other than this is going to end up being perceived and taken personally by conspiracy cats but actually it shows that he's not actually paying attention he needs to be paying attention and he's not so it's just bad when presented with the evidence that's contrary to your opinion, as a, as a teacher, you have an, an obligation, a duty, I would argue, to at least understand the other po the opposing viewpoint and provide a counter allegation to why it must be wrong. And well, it, it was in, as it stands right now, he hasn't responded, and I think it's because he realizes that he's got this wrong, and he's just going to pretend that he's not bothered about it anymore. And let it fizzle away. But the reality is he realises he has this wrong and he won't fix it. That's what the problem is. Starting in about 20 minutes, I'm going to be um, 
disproportionately on mute on account of the fact my kid's just woken up and she's screaming her head off, she's teething. Okay. I'm going to go get myself a coffee. Ah, uh, no, dead air on the after show, uh, on the, not the after show. Oh, right, okay, well, in that case, <laughs> I'm off a little bit. Um, Don't I'll... worry about it. I was just well, going to do the same thing, to be honest. I know that she's going to be, uh, she's going to be howling. Root. Rue Hiff's done a response video as well, basically um, holding the uh, conspiracy cat's willy. So we've got the same argument against Rue Hiff. Um, we can either, well, probably do nothing with Rue Hiff, but we can do if we want to. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'll go and get a coffee because I know you're doing the same. There's a DVR function on the. Uh... On the pre-show, so if you want to really enjoy that silence, you can rewind it. Technically, it wasn't silence. There was a bark in the background. <clears throat> yeah, I was just saying that Ruhif Hiff, Ru in the same position as uh, Conspiracy Cat's in that he's holding his willy. And we can pull him down if we want to, or we can just ignore him. But basically, they're both doing the same thing. Ruhif's a nobody. I mean, just focus on Cat's eye would. He thinks he's a somebody, at least. Yeah. Nathan, my my kid's really sick, so um, there's no way I'm going to be able to. There's no way I'm going to be able to do a, an introduction or anything. I don't know what I should do: postpone the show, cancel the show, because there's no way I'm going to get to do an intro or anything. Uh, just the show must go on, mustn't it? So just start it off, and then I'll just cover for you. Okay, I mean, yeah, if you can explain the situation, 